Hello, my wicked folks. What the frick are we doing here? What am I doing here? I have no business being on video, on social media. What gives me the idea that I can give other people advice and that they should follow it? Does this sound familiar? I'm sure it does. I think we've all been there. Well, I am Cheryl and this is WTF your source for marketing, technology, operations, and whatever the heck else I feel like talking about, advice uh, for your business. And today I'd like to tell you a little story. So I was out taking a walk, it's where I do my best thinking, and I was contemplating, of all things, what do I want to be when I grow up? And lamenting the fact that, you know, I was at this point in my life that I was thinking such a thing. Uh, don't you ever get too old to think such a thing? But I had found myself at a, a crossroads and not the two country lanes intersecting in a rural area kind of crossroads. I was at the LA freeway system of crossroads. I had some really big life changing decisions to make and uh, that's never, never an easy place to be. And so here I am contemplating, what do I want to be when I grow up and, and lamenting the fact that I was 42 years old thinking this. Uh, and then I giggled, I'm 42. I am the answer to life, the universe, and everything. What an auspicious age. And then it hit me. I had the most earth shattering, phenomenal thought of my life. And let me tell you, I've had a lot of thoughts. It is never quiet in here. But this one, this one was the biggest, best one ever. I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. Me. Yep, that's it. Me. Doesn't sound like much. It's not much. But it's all I have. It's all any of us have. It's all we're ever going to have. It's all we can take with us when we go. And... I feel like I have spent my life as an imposter uh, and not quite the same sort of imposter syndrome that a lot of people struggle with, um, be it feeling like an imposter in your profession and that you don't actually know as much as people think you know, certainly uh, a real thing and, and a problem that a lot of us deal with. Um, but in my case, I felt like I wasn't qualified to be me. I had spent so much of my life being told that I was too bossy, too loud, too quiet, too cold and business-like, too emotional, too something, anything. It was all code for I'm too different. And people didn't want me to be different. They didn't want me to be me. And I had spent an awful lot of time with people giving me that message. And uh, I had really, really internalized it. Um, when I was 21 years old, I opened my consulting firm, Carnanco. 21, and I was giving advice to business owners who were 30 years my senior. And uh, I certainly didn't look even 21. Um, I looked about 16. And so I did what I could to make myself fit in and, and look the part. I cut my hair shorter. I bought the right clothing. Um, and uh, I really, really spent a lot of time and effort trying to make sure that I, I fit in uh, and that I, I looked the part for professionally and personally. And um, most of my work was coming from referrals, referrals from title insurance underwriters largely, and uh, they were telling potential title companies, brand new startups, that they would sign them, but only if they hired Cheryl Evans. So here I was in my 20s consulting to people in their 50s, starting their businesses and telling them what to do and how to do it. And uh, I'm, I always started off with phone calls. And so I, I managed to establish my expertise uh, before I ever met these people in person. And inevitably, in that first meeting, 
about halfway through, they'd finally get up the courage to ask me how old I was. And I'd always respond, well, how old do you think I am? And they'd always say 30. 30 was the absolute youngest they thought I could be to know what I know. And it was the oldest they thought I could possibly be considering how young I looked. Uh, so I spent my 20s pretending to be 30. I spent my 20s pretending to be normal, to be socially adept, to be um, neurotypical. I've spent my life pretending to be neurotypical. And uh, then I, I reached my 30s and I'd had enough. I, I hadn't had enough pretending pretending to be somebody I wasn't professionally and personally. And so I went through a period of time that I call cataclysmic change. Everything in my life changed. Some of it was outside my control. Some of it kicked off uh, some other changes that I chose. But by the time it was all said and done, over the course of nine months, I had changed every major aspect of my life. I had changed my career path. I had changed where I was doing my consulting work and what industry I was working in. I had changed my appearance. I had changed where I live. I had gotten divorced. Uh, just everything in my life changed. And I started a process of becoming more me, more of who I wanted to be. And and that was a process because I had lost that. Who was I? I had to answer that question. And then I had to figure out how to be that person, be the person I wanted to be. And over the course of 10 plus years, I managed to do that more and more, be more me. Um, but my life still has felt segmented. You know, I was more me in this area in this way and more me in this other area in this other way. But I wasn't uh, all me all the time, in all the places. And so here I was at a, another point in my life where a lot of things were changing and I had my aha moment and I want to be me, all me, all the time, whether people like it or not, whether they think I'm weird or not, because I've also learned that it is the things that make me different, that make me think differently and act differently, that give me a different view of the world and how to be in the world and how to react to the world. And it is that unique combination of things that make my advice so powerful and make my way of communicating so impactful for people. And so it is my differences that make me special and I shouldn't avoid them. I shouldn't pretend they don't exist. And embracing them can only bring about more of the good things. And you know, you have to be a little odd to be number one. So here I am world. I was an imposter. And these are my confessions. Thank you so much for joining me. I have so much more coming because I am ready to dump 20 plus years worth of business consulting, content, knowledge, experience, expertise out into the world. Uh, so WTF, is going to give you marketing, technology, and operations advice, and whatever the heck else I feel like delivering. So give me a like, give me a share, give me a follow, because uh, there's so much more coming. And thank you for joining me.